up class today we're going to move on to the unit social movements with the unit social movements we are going to look at india and we're going to look at the continent of africa um, and the result of imperialism which leads into nationalism which leads into several of these countries getting their independence from european colonization so let's start off with india india was colonized by great britain during the 1700s Remember the Great Britain, the British Empire was very large um, and they had colonies throughout the world. However, the concept of nationalism contributed to India's desire for independence. And remember, we learned about nationalism when we looked at World War I. That was one of the causes of World War I. Maine was nationalism, having a love for your country, your identity, and it didn't fit in with. Brit Britain controlling India because they couldn't they couldn't um, practice their beliefs. They had a huge love um, for their country, and they just wanted the European the Europeans out. Um, so Indian nationalistic movements were not very successful in the beginning into Gandhi's leadership. Um, Gandhi forced change and an end to British imperialism through a strict policy of non-violence. Or passive resistance so he didn't fight back like he did demonstrations um, Gandhi's gonna be used for future um, civil rights movement like the civil rights movement that took place in the United States Martin Luther King jr. followed Gandhi's belief of nonviolence so this Greensboro sit-in um, boycotts all that is nonviolence because you're not fighting back they got those ideals from Gandhi because that's what he did when he was trying to get India to get um, gain their independence from Great Britain Gandhi's techniques he utilized what is called civil disobedience and civil disobedience is the public act of willfully disobeying the law and or the commands of an authority figure to make a political statement so it's going to be shown to everyone what you're doing, but you want to make a statement that goes all the way up to the government so they know that something has to, has to change. And it's called civil because it's targeting the government. You are a citizen. And then, of course, disobedience means that you are not being obedient to the current laws of that nation. Example of civil disobedience would be boycotts such as assault march, and that's what Gandhi did, and hunger strikes, just not eating. Um, he forced a change at home by attempting to do away with the Hindu caste system. And the caste system was basically, um, it's just a, it's a class system where you have, you can have your priests at the top and then at the bottom be the slaves. So it wasn't a fair system. You couldn't move up the caste system. Um, so depending if you were born in poverty, that's where you remained. If you were born in a rich family or in the higher um, level of the caste system, you were doing very well. Gandhi was actually born in the second level of the caste system, so he was doing well. He went, got education, but he did want to do away with the caste system. And if, as you see, Hindu, that's the form of religion that they have in India. Um, Great Britain is going to weaken, is weakened by its efforts in World War II finally conceded to India's nationalist demands in 1948. So India is going to gain their independence in 1948. The sad part is Gandhi um, is going to be assassinated and um, it's not going to be alive to see, you know, India's independence. The next social movement that we want to look at is Pan-Africanism. If you look at the root word, Africa, so we're going to go to the continent of Africa. Shortly after the end of World War II, most European nations were in the process of ending imperial control of Africa. Because remember, we already talked about the scramble for Africa, how these European countries went in there and divvied up Africa into different areas. Well, now it's starting to change, and they're starting to leave after World War II. Pan-Africanism became prevalent on the continent of Africa. Um, it is a nationalistic movement that calls for the unity of all African nations. So basically, if you have any African descent, they're, they're asking for everyone to come together. Um, their goal is to unite the whole continent of Africa after the Europeans had love. Um, looking at several different countries in Africa that have their own nationalist movement, 
Ghana, the leader of Ghana's nationalist movement was Kwame Nkrumah. Basically, Ghana was an English colony. Um, England called it the Gold Coast. Kwame renamed it, renamed the area to Ghana because ancient kingdoms, one of the most prevalent ancient kingdom in Africa was the kingdom of Ghana. So he restored that name to that area. Um, he is also going to follow the teachings of Gandhi. So he's going to do civil disobedience. He's going to do nonviolent protests. And I said he used civil disobedience against the British and they finally leave Ghana. Um, going to another country in Africa is Kenya. They were the leader of Joma Kiante. That was his le the leader, um, their nationalistic movement leader. It was a similar story of Ghana. It was a colony of Britain. They wanted their freedom. Um, they used nonviolent protests to get it. Britain is finally going to leave Kenya. Um, looking at South Africa, I think this is the most popular story or history story told, is um, the leader, well known, Nelson Mandela, he just passed away. Um, and they have a movie about him now. Basically, South Africa was colonized.